I'm Doria Fleischer, your Community Engagement Coordinator. Here at Charles County Government, we always believe in the importance of sharing our citizens' histories and stories as much as possible. This year for African American History Month, we had the incredible experience of partnering with Charles County Public Schools in order to create facilitated conversations between three current high school students and three Pamunkey High School Alumni Association members. Sitting down with these students and alumni members was an incredible experience to hear how their generations both experienced African American history and black culture in Charles County and in the United States. We hope you'll enjoy hearing their stories through their generational voices. For this year's celebration and commemoration of African American History Month in Charles County, it has been an absolute pleasure to work with Charles County Public Schools to put together Generational Voices, a collaborative conversation between some of our younger Charles County residents that are students at Charles County Public Schools and some of our, and I say this delicately, older and most respected residents are graduates of Pamunkey High School and proud members of the Pamunkey High School Alumni Association. It is an absolute pleasure and honor to be sitting here today with Matt Nelson, who is the class of 2023 at Westlake High School, and Ms. Doris Mason, who is the class of 1962 of Pamunkey High School. Thank you both for being here today. No We've had a couple minutes to sit and talk and get to know each other, and I feel at this point that I'm really just an add-on to this conversation because hearing what you two have been saying to each other makes me just kind of want to push back and let, and let you both speak. And I want to touch on some of the things you talked about already, but could you start by just introducing yourself and, and who you are and what your identity means to you? So Matt, tell us a little bit about, about you. Well, my name is Matthew Nelson, and my identity means to me, identity, the way to describe identity is to color your skin what you look like, where you're from, your religion, heritage, all of that. I take pride into being an African American and to be in America. I think that the way some people look at it is if, oh, he must be um, a robber. You know, it's a constant degrading level of how black people, especially black men, younger men, are portrayed as the bad guy always, and it's never the other person, while the white boy or person is just, you know, walking around, doing drugs, handing it off to somebody, but nobody looks at him as the bad guy. So you see that discrepancy. Now you are part of a really amazing program, and I actually shouldn't say you are a part of. You are responsible for starting a really amazing program here at Westlake High School, yeah? Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about the Elite Black Men program at Westlake? So Elite Black Men is a group of brotherhood that is portrayed of many words that to where everybody just comes together and you should always know that you should always have somebody to have your back, like a really good friend of yours that you know for years, Some always something like that. But it's really to teach the younger kids to just do better and try and stay out of trouble. Mm. Well, that's amazing, and thank you for starting that program so that your peers have access to it, but also I, I know there's some elementary school involvement also, and I, I love that for our younger students as well. Thank you. Yeah, so it would be a good opportunity for them to learn at an early age because it would be good experience and good knowledge for them to carry that on for generation to generation. That's wonderful. Thank you. And Ms. Doris Mason, tell us a little bit about you and your identity and who you are. Well, I'm Doris Mason, and I am known to like to help people. I have been doing Meal on Wheels for about 13 years, and I'm still able to do it because I have a wonderful little 23-year-old to do all the walking for me. We do the driving and stuff in the bags. I am a member of the NAACP. I'm the vice president of the Pamunkey High School alumni. I belong to the Randolph Ferry uh, Unit 170 of the American Legion, and I've held president, vice president, and chaplain in that, in that uh, organization. And I just like to be involved, especially my older people. I just love, I call and talk to them, even some as far as California, just to check on them and see how they're doing. So I hear the community ringing through for you and helping people, and, right. and same with you. So even with an age difference, um, you both have resumes that I can't compete with. These are, these are impressive 
lives that you are living. So thank you for being a part of our community and doing that. Thank you for having us here. I like, I like helping people. There's nothing wrong with helping somebody who needs it. Yeah, so important. I want to talk a little bit about the, this conversation is going to focus around Black History Month. And this year's theme for Black History Month is fighting, resist, fighting oppression and the resistance and racism that has existed in our black culture for years. Can you tell us what Black History Month means to you and why this month is important or why you think that this is a time we should recognize? Matt, if you don't mind going first. Black History Month to me, it means an annual celebration of African Americans and their achievements that they've done throughout US history for generations and generations of time. It's really to focus on what they've done for the world to change that or at least try to. Like you got like Harriet Tubman, Martin Luther King, you know, you got all those people who tried to change the world to be better. But whatever they tried to do, it was either shot down or looked upon as something different and that it couldn't be changed. But just like Martin Luther King, he just wanted everybody to be free, have freedom of speech. He got shot for it. You know, it's a constant cycle of a somebody trying to do something good for the world and it just it's just looked upon and they get taken out for it for no reason. Mm -hmm. So I would say that Black History Month is just it's just the month of celebration. Thank you. And Ms. Doris, what is what does Black History Month mean for you? It is our month of pride and joy. Mm -hmm. We it's 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 they gave us the shortest month of the year, but it gave us the loving month of the year. Valentine's Day is this, it's this month, and Heart Awareness Day is this month. So it's from the heart. And words cannot describe how, uh, when the February come up, how we feel. And the things that some of the black people's invented, like imagine the world without potato chips, or peanut butter, <laughs> or the traffic light. It's so much we've done. I, my only wish is it would not just be sh shown on, in February. Mm -hmm. Let it be put in the history books, all ethnic groups, and keep it out, keep it out month, but just let all of it, our history be in the books like everybody else's history. A part of our American uh, history. Right, yeah. because uh, the black man did the backbone work for a whole lot mm -hmm. of things that we taking for granted today. Yeah. Thank you. So it's our month of pride and joy. Well, I am, I'm really honored to be with you here this month, the month of love, I like that. We were talking before about really how different your high school experiences are. And, and Ms. Doris, you were the class of 1962 and you jumped right in and you were explaining to Matt what it was like to live in Charles County in Maryland, in the United States at that point, and the things that you weren't able to do. Can you talk a little bit about the, the movie theaters and the stores and? True. We could not go into the stores. If your parents took you into the grocery store, they had you by their hand because you weren't gonna touch nothing. You couldn't touch nothing. In the clothing store, we couldn't try on clothes. We might have to hold it up to you and hope that it fit. In the movie theaters, we had two movie theaters. One was in Glamont, Maryland, and the other was in La Plata, where we had separate doors to go in, and we had to sit upstairs, and the whites sat downstairs, and we would have to wait till the whites left the theater before we could come that downstairs. And then we had Marshall Hall Amusement Park, uh, down Marshall Hall. You couldn't go into the park. You could go in there and get a job, like, cleaning up the trash and all of that. And I had a friend who uh, was in D.C. and had won a trip to come. They had a, the Wilson line came from uh, D.C. down to Marshall Hall Park and bring people to the park. He had won a trip to come to Marshall Hall Park. But when he got to the park, he couldn't get off the ship because mm. he had to stay on the ship because it wasn't integrated. And uh, they had the jobs like clean up the trash, and when they did integrate and say they could go into the pool, they covered the pool up mm. and, and black topped it over. Even, I'm Catholic, even in the churches, we couldn't sit where we want to. We would have to sit in the last two or three rows in the back or go upstairs. Mm. 
So uh, it's a whole lot different now. But we was brought that way, and we didn't, I mean, we knew we, was, we wasn't equal, but it didn't bother us as much until now that you can see what we really did miss. And like going to school, uh, you could go past the white school, but when we got the bu our school buses was the old buses that was broken down. Our books was the used books coming out of the white school, sometimes pages missing, sometimes tore up. Didn't have enough, you couldn't take them home because you would have to sit where two or three had to read out that same book. Um, then when you got to school, you was wet and cold because half time the buses wouldn't start in the morning. But our teachers were so, so, so um, uh, appreciative. They had went through the same thing, and we not knowing, but they was they, they really looked out for us. It was a rough time, <clears throat> and now that you can sit back and look back at what the kids have now, we were really, <laughs> really out of sync. Yeah. So Matt, when I hear about Doris and her experience with high school, the racism is just blatant. Yes. How does that? compared to where you feel like your generation is, where, where high school is like for you? I mean, uh, like she said, it was, all, it was always separated. Now it's like you can go into the same bathroom. You can eat at the same lunch table with somebody. You can go to church with, the same, with a different color. You know, you can go to the supermarket and just, you know, do what you want with somebody. You know, now it's like everybody can come together and do those things. But it's still some parts of the world where it's just like, it's just still fully racist, you know? Mm -hmm. But high school now, from my experience, I wouldn't say I experienced racism. Yeah, people have like the jokes and stuff, you know, they say that stuff online. But here, I would say it's pretty equal. I haven't experienced it as much as Miss Doris has, but I would say it's okay for now. What do you think are your generation's biggest struggles? What is what is your generation fighting and, and resisting, and what kind of oppression does your generation still have? As of right now, we're fighting the battle of skin color and the police. Mm -hmm. It's it's an everyday thing. I me, I walk to I walk to my job. It's only like ten minutes, but I'm always checking my surroundings, make sure I'm not being followed, or whenever I see the police, I kinda get a little scared. Cause me, I wear I wear a ski mask because it is kind of cold, so it's just to cover my face. I got a big jacket on, it's black, you know. So they all better look at you as like, oh yeah, he's up to no good. But sometimes me, I just got pushed through it, and hope I don't try and get in the mix. It's always something, just like uh, Trey Nichols. Yeah, he may have ran from the police, but they stopped him without giving him a reason. And what they did was beat him. And the thing that sucks is that it was a it was black people. So now it's just like, whose side are we on? But then you see your own kind do it. So now it's just like, who do, who are we supposed to trust? You know? When when you hear that, Miss Doris, is it do you feel like there's huge generational change? Does it sound similar to your stories? Where does that you have you have so so much history to reflect back on? What he's saying, it was going on then too, but I mean, we didn't have, one thing, we didn't have television and all the all the communication, so a whole lot of stuff you didn't know about right. unless you was around or somebody saw it because right. you didn't have no way of knowing, knowing what was going on. So with all this modern technology, sometimes it's good and sometimes it's not good. Right. Well, we've, we've talked about a lot of heavy, heavy topics. And I want to make sure we also touch on some of the celebration, touch on some of the, the pride. Um, and like you said, I'm going to keep going back to that February is the, the month of love. What do you think your generation can be the proudest of in terms of your accomplishments and, and fighting oppression and, and making change? Oh, we got a lot to be proud okay, of. Okay, I'm ready. First of all, we done had a black president. Now we got a lady vice president. And if you look all down through even the state of Maryland got his first black governor, and we got black senators, and right here in Charles County we got a black sheriff, which never would have happened back there, and he's been elected three times, and you got your county commissioners, 
So we, we got a lot to be proud of. They made Martin Luther King's birthday a national holiday. That was, that was number one. They got him a memorial, that's number two. Now we got the African American History and Culture Center in D.C., so that, that's, that's enough to be proud of. It's a lot to be proud of. It is. And then right in Charles County, we got schools named after some of the black educators and Matthew Henson. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot, we got a lot to be proud you of. You were, the Pamunkey High School alumni group has some pretty powerful names right, behind right. it. Right, right, yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. So we got a lot to be proud of, but like I said, we got a long ways to go because we're not equal yet. No. And, and uh, get, we, if we can get our black history into the regular American history, that would be a, that would be a, That's what you see as the biggest. Yes. Okay. And Matt, what about you? What is your, your generation proudest of right now? What's, what's something that you really feel like your generation can just say, this is amazing, we accomplished this? still feel like it's still going. We're not, we're not finished with um, the achievements that we're making. You know, I heard about the 13-year-old girl who got accepted in the middle school. I, that, that was really amazing because, you know, mm -hmm. she was 13. You don't really see that a lot often. So that was nice. Um, you know, like, like Ms. Doris said, you know, more black governors, female black vice president, black president, you know, I think we just need more of that. Ms. Doris, is there any wisdom messaging that you would want Matt's generation to know? If they could lay down them guns, <laughs> that would be something. Because mm -hmm. guns is just everywhere. When in time they come into the schools, you know, you're finding guns at these schools like every week or so. Yeah. We didn't have that problem. We might have a knuckle upside your head every now and then, but that was about it. Yeah. But if they could just bring some love back to the world. I'm going to hold on to what you started with, Miss Doris, which is that February is Black History Month and the month of love. And let's hope that we can find ways, like you said, get a little more love, a little less violence. Less violence, more love together. in the world. I love it. Thank you both so much for being here today. It has been a pleasure to hear about your different stories and how they come together to make a really powerful history. Thank you.